All right. So uh, as you can see, today's topic is what to expect from speech therapy as a parent. And to discuss about the same, we have an expert joining us. An expert with the five years of experience and have helped around five th- 500 families. Priya Darshini Veeramani. She is a certified and licensed speech and language pathologist by Rehabilitation Council of India. She is a life member of Indian Speech and Hearing Association. A multiple award winner, Priya Darshini, also certifies in oral placement therapy, feeding therapy, and advanced level certification in alternative and augmentative communication. She also has eight national and international scientific publications. So we welcome her to the Mensa platform. We welcome her to the First Parents channel. And let's hear about a topic which is not really aware. Like, we don't spread awareness about this topic, but we must as much as we can. So hi, Priyadarshini. Thank you so much for joining us today. Hi, Palak. Am I audible? Yes, yes, you are. Uh, was I com- uh, audible perfectly? Yeah, yeah, you were, you were. Right. Okay. So thank yeah. you so much for joining us today and uh, thank, thank you so much for helping us and raising awareness about this topic because if I'm being honest with you, neither did I knew about this, neither did my brothers, my, neither did my mom, neither did my dad knew about these topics and uh, I, I personally got to know about this, uh, you know, these uh, speech delays, speech pro- uh, d- disorders, language disorders. Or about, I got to know about all of these things when I was 16. So it's it's not a good thing. It's like we as a society must raise awareness about this topic. So thank you so much for joining us today. Yeah, right. And it's wonderful to know that my talk would be useful to so many people. First, I would like to thank the First Parents Group for providing me with this opportunity. And thank you, Palak, for the wonderful introduction. Sure. So, so you- hi, all. This is... Uh, Priya Darshini. I'm the founder and consultant SLP at uh, MV Speech Clinic, Bangalore. Over to you, Palak. Yeah. So can we jump on to the questions regarding this topic? Yeah, sure. Sure. All right. So uh, maybe we know that what is speech therapy and why do a child requires it? Uh, Palak, I think your voice is breaking. Uh, can you hear me now? Yeah, now it's fine. All right. So my question to you was, uh, can we start by, you know, uh, explaining the uh, participants, all the listeners out there that what is speech therapy and how does it help a child? Okay. So uh, first thing uh, I would like to make it clear is that there are a group of people who assume that, uh, you know, speech therapy is all about uh, improvising one's public speaking skills. But it is not. We as SLPs are trained to assess and manage any deficits or disorders related to speech and swallowing. Now, uh, when you bring a kid for assessment uh, to us, now we SLPs use our observation and uh, we use many uh, standardized test tools or instruments according to the child's needs. And we finally arrive at a diagnosis. And based on the diagnosis, we decide on the goals and we prepare customized lesson plans. Now, so what do we work on in speech therapy for the kids? So I can divide this into three broad skills. Now, it can be communication, speech, and language. When we talk about communicative skills, we first focus on the modality, as in we find and train a way in which the child prefers to communicate. Now, it can be uh, verbal, gestural, signs, or uh, even simple indications like an eye blink, And some uh, kids who are nonverbal tend to use uh, alternative and augmentative communication devices, wherein they just uh, have specific uh, controls or buttons to answer to simple questions in order to, you know, communicate their basic needs. And next aspect under this communicative skills would be to train for requesting. Now, here the child should be able to request a target in order to meet their needs and wants how far they are able to, you know, engage in that uh, communication to meet their needs in the environment. Now, next comes our speech skills. Here, the focus would be on uh, um, correcting pronunciation errors, working on uh, fluency of speech in kids who stammer and uh, 
managing difficulties with initiating their voice and uh, any voice related uh, or voice quality concerns which would arise due to structural issues like a polyp nodule etc that would be at the level of their voice box or the vocal folds now the last aspect looking onto the language skills see here we help them with all levels starting from uh, single word productions to comprehending and using meaningful sentences in conversations we also help with uh, comprehending and uh, responding to uh, various questions there are a lot of you know different questions like what who where when and how and we tackle advanced language issues as well by working on uh, um, higher language skills like reasoning problem solving inferencing summarizing etc which involves the child's cognitive skills as well so these are the three skills we focus on during sessions for children so which are basically communication speech and language uh now it's not as simple as uh, i had put it forward now all these involve a lot of tiny sub components and processes which need to be achieved consistently before making a smooth transition to the next level so this is on as a gist this is what we focus on uh, our speech therapy sessions for children right and as a parent i'm speaking as a parent in here that when should we uh, i i consult a speech language therapist for my child okay so uh, before moving on to this uh, question i would like to request all uh, parents or caregivers to not go by uh, certain baseless statements see we have all heard n number of uh, statements like see your kid is just 2 years just give it time and see how he is speaking or he is a boy child he'll obviously talk uh, late and what not but it doesn't work that way uh never hesitate to get professional help if you think there's something wrong or your if you feel like your kid is having a speech delay keep monitoring your kid's speech milestones if you have a baby who seems very quiet and isn't exploring much sounds through babbling a toddler who only uses a few sounds instead of words or words which aren't really clear which is uh, which is uh, not very comprehensible by others or let's say a preschool or a school going kid who has very uh, limited vocabulary and talks very infrequently uh, he or she might have any uh, difficulties using language socially with their peers or with people around them now all of them need a formal speech and language evaluation based on the examples that i've mentioned just remember that roughly around 1 uh, year your child should have uttered their first word and by 2 years of age they'll be having a vocabulary of 200 to 300 words and they will be forming simple sentences to communicate their needs um you know describing things around them and uh, start narrating simple sequences and by 4 years of age you can expect your kids speech to be uh, 90% clear with adequate language skills now they can use it for you know questioning expressing their thoughts and describing stuff around them so basically i would like to highlight six key areas for you to notice in your child's speech it would be their uh, vocabulary and the clarity how clear are their pronunciations then comes the fluency then we have the sentence formation and then the voice and social language skills which they'll be using it with peers and with people around them if you feel they lag or have any difficulty in any of these skills please consult a certified slp right away right and it's like ironic that uh, all i can remi- remember all i can recall about this is that the parents saying that my child is just shy or uh, my child is just introverted and that is why he's having difficulty yeah. in speaking out in public yeah exactly so and just... it's very uh, you know and it's very challenging to make them differentiate between the nature of the kid and the actual speech issue right exactly so thank you so much for addressing that and uh, that brings me to my next question that what are the skills that my child can learn from regular speech therapy session okay so as i had uh, mentioned it before during our uh, initial discussion so we'll be focusing on uh, communication speech and language skills for the child when we are working 
with uh, regular speech therapy sessions. So these are the three skills which we'll be uh, uh, planning activities, which we'll be setting the goals on for working on each kid according to their condition. Now these goals and activities will vary according to the child's needs. Right. And uh, how long should I continue talk, taking speech therapy for my child? Okay. Now, uh, this is uh, one of the most frequently asked questions from parents, I would say. See, all of us need to understand that each child is unique, right? And every child has uh, his or her own set of strengths and challenges. We need to consider a child's uh, coexisting condition as well. Like, as a, for example... Some kids might have uh, sensory processing deficits or motor and neurological difficulties. Such difficulties tend to interfere with the child's learning. Now, let me give, me, give you all an example. Let's take a child with uh, auditory hypersensitivity. Now, with this condition, kids will have a heightened sensitivity to sound stimuli. Okay, And processing those sounds will be challenging for them. Now, when a child is able to hear a distracting sound in his or her learning environment, they might get anxious. It will be so disturbing for them that they won't be able to pay any attention to learning. So all these are uh, factors which need to be considered when you're planning about uh, prognosis timelines. Okay. So uh, in general, once your child has achieved age adequate speech and language skills, your SLP will be discussing with you regarding the termination of services and how you can continue your home training from then on, like after the therapy sessions. And I would uh, always recommend all parents to have a follow-up evaluation as well. Like even uh, after you stop your regular speech therapy sessions and you know that you still know that your child has achieved age-adequate speech and language skills, sometimes there may be a regression as well. So it's better to have follow-up evaluation just to make sure that your child's development is on track after that. Right. And uh, that brings me to my next question. It's, it is that, uh, it is, it's like a really common question. Let me say that, uh, will my neurodivergent child change into a neurotypical child after speech therapy? So uh, can you like, you know, also tell us that what is neurodivergent and uh, what is neurotypical for the listeners out there? Can you also uh, elaborate on that? Sure, definitely, Palak. Uh, to start with, uh, I'd like to make it clear that uh, neurodivergent is only a term that refers to people whose brain develops or works differently. Now, they have different advantages and challenges from people whose brains develop typically. It is just the way our brain processes and the way it is wired. That is what is the difference between being neurodivergent and neurotypical. Now, uh, I would like to make it clear that be it neurodivergent or neurotypical, these are not like, you know, any voluntary options to change or choose when we want to. It is just the way our brain processes naturally. Uh, some neurodivergent kids have uh, excellent memory skills or may really be quick in doing calculations uh, while still having challenges in their social skills. So neurodivergent uh, conditions include uh, autism, ADHD, Down syndrome, etc. Now, I would like to emphasize on the fact that every child is different and each child's way of processing information around them is different. So during speech therapy, we would be focusing on communicative speech and language skills for the child. But the thing is, the way their brain processes might not change. That is how the way their brain processes information. It's nothing wrong or nothing right to say there. It's just that we need to focus on learning and communication is the key here. We need to prioritize communication here. You should definitely seek professional help according to your child's uh, physical and mental status. In a nutshell, reach out to concerned professionals for your child's challenges and parallelly facilitate his or her unique strengths as well. And uh, one more thing I would like to emphasize here is always be accepting of all learning modalities. If your child starts communicating just through gestures, it's fine. It's completely okay. That is a modality as well. That is acceptable as well. 
anyway the child is communication uh, he or she is communicating there isn't it always remember that communication is the key here and the modality or the way of learning shouldn't be restrictive or focused upon so i'd like to request all the parents to be uh, you know accommodative of uh, their kids way of processing the kids way of learning and their communication modality right and uh, are there like any do's and don'ts that parents should note down like few things that might hinder the speech and language development in children and uh, a few things that can help them yeah uh, when you talk about uh, do's i would say that uh, though you uh, take your child for regular speech and language therapy always have a stimulative environment at home just because you are leaving your kid in a regular speech therapy session uh don't uh, take that for uh, you know granted and uh, uh, be uh, busy with your own activities i understand that all of us have work to do yes but make sure that daily on a daily basis you are spending quality time with your kid to make sure uh, you create enough communicative opportunities for them to use all those skills they have learned so far in therapy and in other environments you know like school or nearby places that would be the main you know do's of speech therapy and whatever the slp is advising you to do at home please do follow their instructions be it the goals or the activities even the way in which it should be carried out so all these are you know systematically curated for each child and it's always better if you are there to it at home as well and uh, the main don'ts of it uh, would be uh, you know uh, as i had mentioned before be uh, please be accommodative of the communication modality of your child uh, please don't be upset if the child is going to you know communicate through actions or communicate uh, just through you know finger pointing that is a modality as well there is anyway a meaningful response so that is what our focus should be there so never uh, you know discourage a child to not to use a specific uh, type of communication modality always prioritize communication right and any last minute tips for the parents yeah and uh, i had though i have helped so many families i still see a lot, uh, see a lot of stigma around this uh, you know getting their uh, child to a speech pathologist for a consultation they are so much worried uh, to even discuss it with their uh, relatives or friends that they are going to get their child evaluated uh, i would like to say that there is nothing wrong in discussing all these with uh, the familiar people in your circle because this should be normalized getting a speech consultation is the basic thing that every child or every individual should go through there's nothing wrong in this there's nothing wrong in knowing where your child stands in terms of their speech and language skills so never hesitate to seek professional help when you need it if you feel like you need it or if you feel like your child is lagging behind there's nothing wrong in it and you're not putting your uh, you know child down by going in for a speech and language evaluation no it will only do them good it will only make you aware of where your child stands right now and what all help we as slps can do in order to improve their quality of life right it's okay to seek help and i want to emphasize again on this thing that it's not just your that uh, that is how uh, that, that is what the child's behavior is it can be an issue let the experts decide on to it and it's completely yeah. fine there is always a way out of it and um, and of course parents play a really important role into uh, development of their child of course so it's it's okay to ask for help so thank yeah, you so much right. uh, priya darshini for joining us today and it was thank really you. an amazing session and we actually needed to you know spread awareness on this topic and we are trying to do it as much as we can yeah you guys are really doing a great job i'm just uh, you know grateful that so many people are getting to know much needed information through your platform uh, thank you so much priya darshini so everyone uh, listening to the plat- uh, to this circle right now uh, she is going to start her own channel on mensa and she is going to talk about speech and language th- uh, disorders and uh, how can we help the children in their uh, in the future development so uh, stay tuned and um, let's let's uh, look forward to hear more from her thank you so much priya darshini for joining thank you thank you palak thank you palak for hosting thank you bye bye 
Thank you for watching. For more such videos, do like, share and subscribe to the first parents.